In this video, I'm going to go through how to determine the Vesper shape for a molecule. I have Doc Brown and Sally Ann here to double check my work and make sure I don't make any mistakes. So these are all the possible molecular shapes that are um, in chemistry. These are the major regions of electron density. Um, they're also called um, electron coordinated geometry. So here are the possible shapes. You can have a one region, which is linear, which is that one. That's the only option if you have one region of density. You can have another shape, which is linear, if you have two regions of electron density around that central atom in this case. So these would be the two regions of electron density where the bonds would be made. When you get to three regions, depending on if they're all bonded or there's a lone pair, you can have a trigonal planar shape. Or if one of these is a lone pair, you can have a bent shape with 120 degrees. If you have four regions of electron density, it would start out looking like this, which is a, called a tetrahedral. And again, one by one, if you were to have a lone pair, which is symbolized by the letter E, and X means that it's bonded. So these would be where the atom in the center is bonding to these uh, atoms on the outside, and that would be three bonded and one lone pair. And then the last one for four regions of electron density is the molecular shape of bent, and this would be about 104.5, where the center atom is bonded to two other atoms, but it also has two lone pairs represented just by the open spaces there. And that's called AX2E2. If you have expanded octets, those can happen when you have atoms that have uh, more than 15 protons in their nucleus. So this would be the base shape called trigonal bipyramidal. You can see the, pier, uh, the um, triangle in the center and then it makes two pyramids on the top and bottom. When you lose a bond and it turns into a lone pair, the important part for the next one called AX4E is that the lone pair has to be in the largest angle. So you wouldn't put the lone pair here. This is a 120 degree angle. So the lone pair would actually reside on this uh, trigonal planar portion. And then it actually looks a lot like a seesaw or a seahorse, or some people will call it a distorted tetrahedron. And then again, if you have only three atoms bonded and two are lone pair, again, you have to remove the bond and make a lone pair on the largest angle. So that means that is where the next lone pair will be. So the lone pairs would be out here in that trigonal planar shape that's gone. And this actually looks a lot like a T, so chemists called it T-shape. And then the last one to keep the lone pairs as far apart and the bonded ones as far apart is a linear shape where two are bonded. That's what X2 means, and E3 means there's three lone pairs around that center. Last but not least, you could have six regions of electron density. That's where, um, again, it would be an expanded octet, so the center atom has to have more than 15 protons to do that. So this atom has six um, total bonds around it. Again, this one won't matter because if you remove a lone pair and place it, it's going to be at a 90 degree no matter what. So the first shape is called square pyramidal if a lone pair is located there. And again, it's got a square bottom and it looks like a pyramid. The next one is called square planar, so the lone pair would be at the 180 degree spot. Next would be T-shaped if you had three lone pairs and three bonded. Last but not least, you'd have linear. So many of you will have a chart that looks like this to determine how many, um, what are called the electron pair geometry and then the molecular geometry. My students, I have them make a foldable that looks like this, which is the same thing, except for on the inside is where they'll draw those molecular shapes and their examples. Um, so let's get started with some, some examples so that you understand how to do this. Um, these are the rules to determining the Vesper shape. So I'm gonna let you pause if you wanna write those down. And then let's just get started with an example. Um, I'm not gonna explain why this is the dot structure. I'm just gonna say that it is. I have a video on how to do Lewis dot structure, so you can watch that. Carbon tetrachloride is CCL4, and its dot structure looks like this, where carbon is in the middle and it's bonded to uh, four chlorines like that. Once you have the dot structure drawn, the next step is to count the number of regions of electron density around the center atom. So for this one, we have four regions of electron density. You may even have a teacher that actually circles that there's a region there, there, and there. So that means this has four um, regions of electron density. There's four that are bonded, which again, sometimes they give the symbol X. And there's zero that are lone pairs. I'm just gonna say LP for lone pair. 
and that would be the E. So what that means is I have four regions of electron density. And if you have the chart, what you would do then is go down and say, okay, four regions here. And then if they're all bonded, then there's no lone pairs. Tetrahedral is the correct shape. For my students, I'll just show you what they do. They go here and then they open up the four region flap and inside of there, they'll match up the correct shape. So that means if you were to draw this correctly with the right Vesper shape, you'd have your center atom, which would be a carbon. It's gonna bond to a chlorine up and kind of out in the same plane. And then to show that it's coming out at you, a lot of chemists will draw you kind of a line that looks a little bit dark, like a triangle, and then a dash line going back like that. Um, and then what you do is say it's tetrahedral. And if you had to give the angles, you probably would have a chart like this that would tell you the angles. This chart doesn't, um, but the angle is about 109.5. On to another example. So here's the next example, carbon disulfide, which has the formula CS2. And again, I'm just going to show you the dot structure and not explain why this is the dot structure. Um, carbon disulfide makes a double bond on both sides to a sulfur like that. The next step would be to find out how many regions of electron density are around the center. So you'd say there's two that are bonded. It's okay that they're double, they still would count as bonds, which would be the X. There's zero lone pairs, so again, if you want to write lone pair, just put LP, that's the E. So a total of two regions. So if you have a chart, because um, unless you're one of my students, you would have this, you would go to two regions. If you have a chart like this in your book, you'd say, okay, it's two regions. There are no lone pairs, um, so it's just going to be a linear molecule. So when you draw the molecule, you'd have, oops, sorry, you'd have the carbon in the middle, and then if you want to show the double bonds, you can do that like that. Um, but a lot of times you don't need to. And then those would be the sulfurs. You'd say it's linear. And if you had to give the bond angle, it would be 180 degrees. All right, on to the next example. So the next one we have is dichlorine monoxide. That molecule is Cl2O. The oxygen is going to be in the middle. The chlorine is going to bond on each side. The chlorine will have uh, three sets of lone pairs like that, and the oxygen will have uh, two lone pairs like that. So when you check the center atom, you'll count one, two, three, four. Those are the lone pairs. So what you'd write is that you have two that are bonded, that would be the X, two that are lone pair, that's the E. So it adds up to four regions. So again, you'd grab your sheet, unless you have to have it memorized. And you'd say, okay, well, that's four regions, so the electron pair geometry is called tetrahedral. However, because it's got two lone pairs and two that are bonded, it's going to end up being a bent shape. And so this one's going to end up having a bond um, in the middle like that, and then you're going to have your atom here that it'll bond to, and then another atom sort of coming out at you like that. Um, it's going to be called bent. And then there's couple types of bent, though there's bent um, from a three region also, so you may want to put down that this is about a 104.5, and your teacher may even want to make sure that you have that one facing out towards you to show that it's bent, um, and it's not, not 120. So the big thing is here, don't make this look 120. On to another example. So you can do ions. The carbonate ion is CO32 minus. Um, so the dot structure for that looks like this, and I'll draw this so that it doesn't look um, uh, three-dimensional. And then there's a couple things that can happen unique with carbonate, is that it will have resonance, so you can either choose to show, you know, dashed lines for the fact that that bond will rotate through there, or you can just designate that this will be the double bond and then the lone pairs will go on the outside. And then don't forget that if it's an ion, you really should put it in brackets and put the charge on the outside. So once you have the dot structure done correctly, and again, if you have questions about resonance, see a video that I made before. You have one, two, three regions of electron density. And it doesn't really matter that I have a double and two single. In fact, they're really all rotating that bond anyway. So there's three bonds which again, some people will call it the X. There's zero lone pairs on the center, which is the E. So that gives you three regions. So again, you'll go back to your chart until you have to have it memorized and say it's, um, it's a three region, which will be trigonal planar. And I have no lone pairs, so then it's going to be called 
that shape, trigonal planar. So this one, you don't have to worry about making anything look three-dimensional because the center atom is in, a, in the same plane as the bonded atoms. So you can just draw lines like that. Uh, if you want to put a charge on, you can, but really this is the molecular model shape, so trigonal planar. And then the angles between each of these bonds, all of these have an angle of 120, because if you add all three of those up, you get 360. All right, on to another example. I'm going to go through quite a few examples here. This might be our last one. We'll see. So phosphorus trihydride is PH3. So I'm just going to quickly do the dot structure again for that one. Circle the regions of electron density. So you'll say 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so you've got three that are bonded. I'm just going to put B or, again, one lone pair LP. This is the X and the E which is four regions. Grab your chart one more time here and say, okay, it's four regions, which is this one. And um, it's got three that are bonded in one lone pair. So you want to make this look trigonal pyramidal. This again needs to look three dimensional. So your center atom, you need to show that you're bonding outwards towards, you know, the outside of the plane there and then into the plane there. And you've got this trigonal pyramidal shape. And the angles are approximately 107. You know, they do kind of change, so you can even add like an approximate depending on what atoms are bonded. It looks like I can sneak in one more example, so here we go. This is another one that's an ion. And again, I'm only dealing today with um, under four regions. Uh, these I'm not dealing with in this video. I, I make another video for those. But we're just dealing with the typical four, three, and two regions of electron density. You again can have an ion. The nitrite ion is that. Um, the dot structure for this would look like um, a lone pair on the nitrogen. And again, this has resonance. So this double bond I'm going to make could be in either location. I'm just going to pick that it'll go here, and then the lone pair will go there. But really, it can be in either location around that atom. Don't forget those brackets. So then one minus. Moving on to the Vesper shape, so you've got one, two, three, so three regions. Um, if you want, you can list again that two are bonded. doesn't matter if it's single and double, it's still that two that are bonded. One that's a lone pair. So when you grab your, your sheet one more time, you've got um, three regions. So you go to the three, and it's bent. But this one is bent with 120 degrees, so no need to show any three-dimensional look to it um, because really this one is the bent with 120 degrees. I hope these examples helped you. And again, what you're going to want is to have a chart that looks like this to determine the Vesper shape. Um, these again are the rules to doing a Vesper molecule. Again, it all starts from a correct dot structure, so make sure you do those right. And again, my students have something that looks like that um, to help them through this process. I hope the video helped you decide what kind of Vesper shape a molecule has.